Back in January of this year, there was an event hosted by the good folks over at Beers and Cameras. If they're hosting a meetup in your area, I highly, highly encourage everyone out there to go. I met some awesome photographers and we chatted about our gear and the type of photos we like to take. And I got to meet the two daddies themselves, Caleb from Bad Flashes and Jason from Grainy Days. And those who were organizing the event were doing a raffle at some point. One of the items that they were raffling off was a roll of 120 Aerochrome. We'll get into what that is in a minute. So I ran into Caleb and I said, hey, if I win the raffle, can I give you the roll? I'd love to see what you shoot with it. And he graciously replied, no, 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 you should shoot it. At the time, I didn't even have a medium format camera, so shooting it was a bit of an impossibility. Not long after, I went downstairs and met Jason and started talking to him. And that's when the raffle started. And as they were rifling through the bowl of tickets, I lean over and I say to Jason, hey, if I win, can I give you the roll? And he replied essentially the same way that Caleb did by saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, no, are you stupid, idiot? You should shoot it. So I threw my hands up and I said, yeah, maybe you're right. And then about 30 seconds later, well, I won. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'm not sure what to do with this thing, and I can already foresee all of the I'll take it off your hands comments. Believe me, walking out of that Beers and Cameras event felt like I was susceptible to a mob hit. I swear to God, I felt like Henry Hill looking out for helicopters and goodfellas. At the time, I think that I knew that this stuff was coveted, but I didn't know exactly how coveted it was. Some of you may be wondering, do you believe in life after love? And some of you may be wondering, what the f*** is Aerochrome? Go ahead, type in Aerochrome into YouTube and you'll find a mega ass ton of other people answering that exact question. But in the interest of saving you time and effort, let me explain. Kodak Aerochrome is a series of film emulsions that are sensitive to near-infrared light. It was manufactured by Kodak between 1942 and 2009. Infrared film, a wizard of the visual realm, is adept at sensing reflected infrared light, the kind that plants just can't stop radiating thanks to something called the wood effect. And behold, the misfit of the modern infrared family, Aerochrome. While its cousins, like Ilford SFX and Raleigh Infrared, decided to go all black and white, Aerochrome was the rebel with a cause. A cause for some exceptionally wild-looking antics. Its original job was to keep an eye on the health of vegetation. Trees that had been cleared or objects that were painted green had no chance to hide from Aerochrome's watchful gaze. You could bet they stood out like a sore thumb in a sea of red canopies looking up saying, Hey, we're right over here. Soon enough, the military got wind of Aerochrome's skills and just had to get in on the action. And Aerochrome, being the versatile film that it is, nodded with a wink and said, Sure thing, I'm up for a camo hunting adventure. Who would have thought that a film meant for plant health checks would become the darling of military missions and forestry investigations? Life sure does take some unexpected turns. Another key application is making some trippy-ass 70s album covers. Originally crafted for professionals and the military, this gem just could not resist the allure of the consumer world, and decided to slip into the hands of everyday folks around the swinging 60s, reborn as the famous Kodak EIR. Like a curious adventurer, Aerochrome ventured into graphics departments and photographers' pockets, all in the pursuit of that otherworldly effect. People just couldn't get enough of its psychedelic charms. But alas, fame can be fickle and the glitz and glamour began to wane as folks started craving something new. Some called the results gimmicky, but hey, who can resist a little flair? Meanwhile, the professionals and the military had already moved on to the digital playground, leaving Aerochrome with a lingering nostalgia for its heyday. By the late 2000s, Kodak had decided to close the curtain on this magical emulsion. And it was the end of an era, but fear not. Because just before the final bow, some brave souls stepped in to save the day. Dan Benici got his hands on a grand stash of aerochrome, dreaming of spreading its wonder across the photo community. And those supplies have run dry by now, but the magic remains in the hearts of those lucky enough 
to experience it. And now we're all caught up with this lovable doofus who just won this enigmatic roll of film at a raffle in some bar in Manhattan. So, what do I do now? Honestly, I'm making this video as more of a document than anything else, just to see where this journey takes me. But deep down, I don't know what I'm going to do with this precious roll of film. The mere thought of shooting it terrifies me to no end, while selling it, on the other hand, feels like such a waste of an incredible opportunity. It's like I'm caught in the age-old dilemma, you know, the kind that Shakespeare would write about. To shoot aerochrome or to not shoot aerochrome, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Okay, that was obviously a joke, but that does kind of sum up the way that I'm feeling right now. I've taken to calling this my film shooter's dilemma. Very early on in this channel, I made a video about my struggles with anxiety and the things that hold me back from capturing a photo. There's a preciousness to shooting on film that I don't personally get when shooting digitally. There's a tangibility to your successes, but also to your failures. And now this nagging, intrusive thought keeps creeping into my mind, especially when I'm holding onto something as coveted as Kodak Aerochrome while being stared at by a room full of envious onlookers. I wouldn't say that I'm one to fold under pressure, but I would say that I am one to hold myself back from feeling the pressure when I fear that it'll be too dense. Like I see something like Aerochrome, something with a finite availability, a finite vitality, and an ever-expanding demand, and I wonder, am I the guy? Am I the one who should hold on to all this power? Am I Thanos with the Infinity Stones, or am I Tony Stark? Okay, that's a bad example, especially when I'm dressed up like the Hulk. How about, am I Mozart, or am I Salieri? Sorry to those of you who are hoping for the whimsical tone to persist throughout this video. You may, you may have just felt the tone shift a little bit. Like Mozart, there are moments when I feel the exhilaration of creative genius surging through me effortlessly. I experience the joy of bringing something remarkable into existence where inspiration flows like a divine gift. And on the other side is Salieri, a gifted composer in his own right, but forever living in the shadow of Mozart's brilliance. And his internal dialogue becomes a battleground of envy and self-doubt. An artist grappling with self-worth can relate to this struggle, feeling the weight of comparison to others, fear that they will never measure up. The haunting question lingers, am I destined to be forever overshadowed? This internal conflict of the artist, like in Amadeus and more recently in Oppenheimer, resonates deeply within me. It's not, it's not just about this film stock, okay? It goes beyond that. It's about self-worth. It's about believing in myself and trusting that I can be a Mozart even when I feel like a Salieri. Amadeus showed the fear of being second best, the fear of failure, and the fear of being handed the keys to the kingdom without knowing what to do with them. And that's exactly how I feel right now, facing this crossroad. As much as I'd like to give you a definitive answer, I'm afraid I can't. Just like in that old anxiety video, I'm gonna have to leave this with a cliffhanger. I don't know if I'm Mozart enough to confidently shoot this role of Aerochrome. If there is a silver lining to this, it's that one, I believe, absolutely should be self-aware enough to recognize their own limitations, but one should also be foolish enough to occasionally ignore that awareness. After all, history has shown that greatness often emerges from accidents, from taking bold risks. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think I should do with this role of Aerochrome. And also, let me know if you can relate to these struggles or if I'm just preaching to the void about my own insecurities. If you do relate, be sure to let me know how you cope. And after you're done with that, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get notified every time a new video is released. And I'll see you all next time.